So it is 7.09. We'll call the meeting to order. So moved. Can I have an acceptance of the agenda? So moved. Second by Mr. Danny. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it's unanimous. We'll start out with um, the walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins here? None? Great. Um, we will move on to item number three, which is the use of town-owned land for affordable housing unit. Mr. Lane? Good evening. Good evening. Hi, Rich. How are you? Good. Yourself? Good. Thanks. Good. Um, Just the formalities. Rich Lane. Oh, Richard Rich. Lane, Lawson Terrace. Great. Thanks. Um, I'm here to ask that you give consideration to sponsoring an article to go before the people who care enough to go to town meeting in the fall to uh, put up a parcel of town-owned land that would be uh, deeded over to Habitat for a single-family dwelling. Great. Um, just a little bit of background. Is this number two or three? This would be number three. Number three. And the other ones are? Next to the police station the police was the station. first one, Stockbridge Road in conjunction with the housing, Board. affordable housing partnership. They're building a duplex and Habitat will build a single family home there. Once they get everything sorted out, it's, because it's a dual project, it's a little more complicated than a single family Habitat. So they're, they're almost ready, they're getting there. Good. So this one's done. Yes. It's been someone's been in there for years now. Uh, yeah, it went to a situate resident, a uh, single father with four children. Uh, yeah, and this one is construction started yet on this? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So when's that? Uh, this year? I would hope. Yeah. Before the end of the year. Okay. And if you can just take a second to tell us about where this one is, where the property is that you're looking this for. This is a lot that the town has possession of that's off of Hadley Road. It's sort of a pizza slice type lot. It's on, the actual address is zero Wood Ave. Uh, it butts, abuts Eli, Hadley, and Wood Ave. Uh, elevationally, it's above the floodplain and velocity. It's a small lot. Uh, 13,431 square feet in a uh, 10,000 square foot zoning. Uh, the building commissioner, Mr. Duggan, took the footprint of the proposed habitat house and laid it out within the envelope of which the house could fit, and it does without requiring any special zoning variances or anything. Uh, and it would be exactly like the house next to the police station. I assume without the deck that goes over the line. Right, right. Well, that, that deck you could. That's, um, yeah. That's just the, the, the triangle he's saying is the buildable The triangle space. is oh, the buildable deck, envelope you could deck anything. which oh, the I house see. will fit so without house, having any all. special hearings. Right. Great. So the deck would be as so proposed. Okay. Yeah. With just a hearing. But you wouldn't even need one, no. Oh, no. you wouldn't? Oh, you all right. You deck your whole property without a, without a, a special permit you can if you want that that's why it, it can go over the line that what they're giving you in that triangle is what's called the building envelope mm -hmm. okay. Great. all right um, discussion John well um, which stopped by my office a little while ago and then I had driven by it my biggest concern was it's a real dangerous stretch of road there the yes, turns and so forth so my concern was you know can you get the driveway off Hadley Road and it yeah. looks like you know he had already had he was ready for that Wood Ave address and right. the access from Wood Ave not Hadley and just just one other thing Richie when you when you've done this before do you do you talk to people around there at all yes do you or, and you did on this one that's I did. awesome great so no negative feedback or what'd you get no, the people I <coughs> talked with and presented it to said that I see. They, they were comfortable with it. Uh, several of them were familiar with the property over here. and It's a modest house. It's not a McMansion, and that lot would never get developed otherwise in that it's very small. Uh, it puts a, another house on the tax rolls again on a piece of property that you're gaining nothing from, and the proviso would be that 
again, this would go to a situate family uh, in the first go around that because the town would put up the lands, a situate resident, a uh, 30-something couple with two kids that are living in mom and pop's basement would get first priority to be the recipient of the house. And it's a single family home? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's a great, a great group. You know, they do great, good work, not only in situate, but in other towns. Um, One yeah. other question. Richie, if, if this looks like it's gonna go forward, this is the new area that's being sewered, so we'd want to make sure it is. And by that time, it would probably be uh, they would ask that a sewer connection would go with it versus having to put a fifty thousand dollars septic system on the site to keep it affordable. But my question would be to have someone contact the contractor to put a stub there, yep. so it could be tied in. So, John, any? No, I mean, uh, I, as a trustee of the Affordable Housing Trust, we'd actually looked at this lot as one of the lots that we'd like to build on. Um, but our reason for not going forward with it was that we'd already started with various other areas, and without trying to bite off more than we could chew, we, we decided to hold off on this specific lot. So saying that you're looking to try to do it, I, I commend you for it, and I'm not going to say no because I'm certainly a big proponent of affordable housing. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly supportive of it, but clearly we were, we were aware of it. And uh, I think Laura Harbottle knows because we looked at uh, this property three years ago or two years ago. I think it was three years ago before the, um, um, what was the, uh, the whole, um, the report that came out, you know, from the woman from Hanover. What's her name? Never mind. It's a big, long name. But in any event, we, we were aware of it. So it's another area, and, and, and they should be spread out throughout town. It's a great location. I think it's right. The only input that I would have, and I, I support it, and I think it's a great idea, you know, you, you dealt with the concerns about the busy street and all that. I just like to give people more than a meeting to come and see if there's any sort of oppositions to it. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that maybe we don't make a motion tonight, but that we put it on the agenda for the next meeting, give anybody a chance that wants to come in and speak about it, for against at least two weeks to come and voice their opinion, and then I would... Uh, I would vote in favor of it. Yeah, I, that's, I think that's fair. I mean, it's last week of, second last week of August. People right. were away. Maybe they knew or didn't know about it. I know I got an email from somebody saying, what was this about? They thought it was about Stockbridge. Um, so, and I know that the news is here tonight, and it would be nice to have it reported that there's a proposal before the board for it. I, I, I would agree. I don't, I'd say that's fair. I don't, uh, two weeks isn't going to make any difference, is it? No. Then we can still get it on the warrant for the, uh, for the special town meeting. As far as I understand, yeah. Great. So, Sheila, can we just put it on the agenda early for, for the next meeting? And um, it looks like you get the support of the three of us, you know, as it stands now, and we'll just give people a chance to, to digest it for a couple of weeks. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, Rich. Thank you. <coughs> Move on to item number four, transfer of two parcels to open space to t of open space to town. Mr. Bjorklund. How are you? Good. Just the formalities of your name and address. Steve Bjorkman, 15 Captain Daniel Litchfield Lane. And uh, this one's going to be pretty quick, I think. Uh, off of Elm Street, we did the uh, Tilden Estate subdivision, which is a flexible open space development. And as part of that, we have to leave 30% as open space, either deeded to the, the town under the care and custody of the Conservation Commission or deeded to a nonprofit that will take care of the open space. And I'm here uh, just to see if the town will accept the, it's actually three parcels of land, not two. Um, one of the deeds, and you actually have draft deeds. Yeah. Uh, one of the deeds is for the open space, which is actually two separate parcels of land. As you look at the plan, there's a small piece at the entrance to the subdivision and a large parcel in orange towards the back of the subdivision. And I've also outlined uh, the second deed, which is known as the Tan House, uh, Tan Brook Protection Parcel, which is the blue parcel at the bottom of the plan here. Uh, the blue parcel is all wetlands, and the other parcel is mixed between wetlands and uplands. Okay. And that, it. the Don't one piece in the front, I don't see that in the, where's? One of the deeds shows two separate parcels. If you go to the second page of the deed. Oh, so it's there, I got you. Small parcel in the front's only about 6,000 square oh, feet. Right there.
So why would we want to take for open space that little sliver, parcel B, other than having you may, uh, having the subdivision fill the requirements of open space? To me, it's like open space for what? It's like, wouldn't, wouldn't the town be better served by having it a part of um, somebody's property to pay taxes on than keeping that little sliver open space? It's, I mean, it was designed to be a buffer for the next door neighbor and buffer basically framework. meets the curb that comes in with the roadway. That's, that was my first yeah. question I had on it. Um, the second question I had on the project was, I noticed in the area that you've colored in orange um, being the uplands, um, what kind of, I could make out some of the wetland delineation, but what kind of walking path or trail, do you have something that's going to be used potentially or, yeah, uh, well, and the reason why I'm asking Steve is this, you've got a cul-de-sac there which is, What's it called? What's the street going? Whatever the street's going to call. Drive, I okay. Is the name of the road. Then you have uh, Penfield, and then you also have Huey, and it would be very. I would think, from just a global perspective, any way of being able to link some of these neighborhoods, because people on Huey can't get to Elm Street without having to go around the whole distance. If there's some way of being able to cut through, and if we, the town's going to have open space, in my mind, some form of path or potential for the future some kind of like walkway or sidewalk or something that people could bike kids from those sections across. I mean, is there an ability to do something like that? Well, what we've done as part of our subdivision is we've actually left an access easement from the cul-de-sac back into the open space um, across what's known as Lot 8. And this is a detention basin parcel here, so they'll have access across the edge of the detention basin, which is basically a grassed area. And there's also a walking easement across Lot 3 near the front of the subdivision in the future, we have basically on the plan and on the subdivision plans as well, a proposed pathway if the town wanted to do something in the future across the back of the subdivision. Um, on the Tan Brook parcel down in here, unfortunately we've got wetlands between Huey Road and where the upland is in our development. So as developers, we have to adhere to the bylaws in town and there is uh, a small stream that goes on the backside of Huey Road which potentially has a non-disturbance zone around that. So I don't want to be the one to try and propose a pathway no, through I, the non-disturbance zone, but the town, if they want Steve, to, you'd may never be able do to. that, <laughs> would you? In your history, huh? <laughs> no, we, we actually looked into tying it into all the people on the west side of Penfield Road. Nobody was interested in providing any type of an easement um, to have people walk through their yards. And the kids actually do walk from Huey Road to the end of Penfield Road through the last house, and they kind of walk their bikes across a little wooden, bo you know, a wooden board, board that goes across the. I only ask that designated, because but they do go through there. For, kids do. That was kind of my focus in saying we're not doing it this year or next year, but maybe in the long term, somebody in their right mind might say, "Hey, guess what? Maybe we can go to um, um, CPC with maybe a bike path." and being able to kind of link that. And if the town's going to be taking that land, instead of having it landlocked, it would make sense that we have an opportunity to kind of link these things to help those neighborhoods out and give them some relief. Third question I had was, um, it looks as though that the deed is proposed to have it go to conservation. Care and custody of the Care conservation. conservation. That's, not guaranteed, that's not necessarily, we don't are mandated to do that. In other words, couldn't we have it go to the care and custody of the Board of Selectmen providing it's kept in perpetuity in open space or that there'd be conservation restrictions with it? So we don't necessarily it's have to do it. It's just draft deed, so. Yeah. And my only reason for saying that is, is that I know that there are other parcels in town that are conservation, but if they were the Board of Selectmen, we would be able to maybe do something like that if, if that's what the board would like to do. Yeah, that would be my need. only thought. I'd like to be able to have it go, providing it's not mandated in a um, flexible open space. I saw, Laura, your, your memo, and I just didn't know whether or not we were mandated or obligated to have it deeded over to the conservation, whether or not it could go to the Board of Selectmen. Confirm that. 
If you could, yeah, that's, that's, I only ask that because if. Just when you find it, let us know. Okay. Yeah. That, it, thanks. Yeah, that, that was my only, my only, my, my observations. That's it. And there are, there is a proposed trail. So I mean, conservation is aware of the fact that this is set up for the town to be able to do a trail system if they want to in the future. Steve, with the wetlands line in the back of that, if you can see it close here, there's a dotted line right here. Hmm. So. Everything so below that line is wetlands. Everything above that line is uplands. Why isn't your blue line on that line then? It's two separate parcels of land. Oh, just because of the land. You should use different yeah. colors. You use the blue for the wetlands. Well, I didn't. The wetlands was kind of irrelevant. It was more the parcels as they reflected in the deeds that we wanted to show the colors of. So the thirty percent that you have to give up or give back to the town, thirty percent of your, can be. In the wetlands, a portion of that can be wetlands, and a portion has to be uplands. And this is ex this is an exact division of what we need to meet. We ended up with the blue parcel is actually over and above the open space requirements that we would have to have. But it's for wet the anyway. subdivision, Cheers right? So we just right. we're just giving that right. to the town, right? Because you're a nice guy. There's no reason for us to keep it. Right. So is that why that little sliver is up there? Because is there some sort of percentage ratio that you have to have wet to? Yeah. So that's why these people on the first lot didn't have a, right, a bigger piece of land. Yeah. And one other question, Steve. We were talking about it earlier. Did you can you loop the water main? What was yeah. you really can't. What, what's right. happening is we were actually required to. We we looked at bringing the water again out through Penfield Road right. to see if we could do that. We couldn't get an easement to do that, but with. Um, with DPW and the planning board, what we're actually doing is looping the water main into our division back right. out onto Elm Street again, so that the flow, instead of just bypassing and going down Elm Street, mm -hmm. will now go through the subdivision and back out. So there'll be no dead end, no new dead end water line out here. The other thing we're doing with this is we're also replacing about, I think it's 320, 320 feet of old water line in Elm Street in order to meet the fire protection requirements. Um, so they will You're, be we, we're doing it, yes, um, at our expense from the back of the Beech Tree Farm subdivision. They actually were, they came out onto Elm Street and did a, a tie-in out there with a three-way gate system. We're going from their tie-in up to our entrance, which will provide better fire protection for everybody in this area. Could you have gone out, instead of going back the way you came in, could you have gone out across someone's property, or you just can't do that, Steve, I don't we, you there, there was nobody that, that was willing to give up, you know, any. Well, it's a, but it's all your land. It's all your development, though. No, well, our, our development and actually, this this line here is all other people. Oh, so all the right. The only entrance we had was this parcel, about 150 feet across, right here. Okay, all right. And now I can see. I mean, I could have. We could have separated yep. it by. It doesn't matter. Right. 75 when, feet right, or something, right, and, and done that. Feet. But right. okay, nope. that didn't make any sense. That's that's all. Okay. Yeah. Two more questions, Steve. Uh, just. Uh, this is not our purview, but I'm, it's always an issue that you hear about sidewalks. Are there sidewalks in the subdivision? Sidewalk in the subdivision, yeah. The other there question. is not one on Elm Street, but there is one in our subdivision. So if the town ever decides to put one on Elm Street, they'll be able to link right into this. Second question I had was um, with respect to, I'm assuming this is going to be a private way? It's not, uh, it's eventually, not we hope to have this accepted by the town. Okay, so um, I asked that because there are a lot of subdivisions that were privately, and they're not now they're being brought forward. And, are these going to be up to the subdivision standards or are they? If you'll remember when you did uh, Cornerstone Estates, which was one that mm -hmm. we built that was kind of equivalent to this, I think we came up with about $500 worth of work that had to be done to bring it up to the standard for the town to accept it. It needed a sign and one Few other more thing. things, but it was, it was not as, yeah. as The standard some of the, the roadway, the construction right. of the roadway, the sub base and all that is done to the subdivision standards, the okay. depth of gravel and all those things. So. It will certainly be a, one of the nicest roads in town. Now, does everyone that's buying the property here understand that they're on a private way? Yes. Well, no, they don't because they're not there yet. Right. But, but when they, they do will. get there, right. they will understand that. There's covenants. There's all kinds of restrictions they have to abide by. And I wish we had 15 lots sold because then I'd give you that answer. But, Steve, that's not your intention to keep it a private way unless I no. just misunderstood. No, it is not. And there's no advantage to a, for a developer to keep it a private way. 
So there's no reason once this is built that we should it's going to get turned right over. Accept it because it's That's being right. built to our very own standard. That's right. right. It's just a matter of it done and then the performance bonds released from the planning board yeah. and then we go to hmm. attack in the perfect way that it should have been happening all along. And then as soon as he's done and that's released, it goes in the next warrant right. and accepted as a public way. Right. What, right. what happens, and it, it happened with Cornerstone Estates, and it's, it's different than some of the older <laughs> roads that you dealt sure. with Thank you. that needed a tremendous amount of work to bring them up to a standard that the town should accept. When you do a flexible open space development, there are certain waivers that we ask for in regards to road width and things like that, but it doesn't make the road substandard construction. It just changes some of the requirements that are in subdivision control law. So the road is still going to be a very high quality road, five inches of pavement and the whole nine yards. So it's going to be built properly, but there are certain waivers that were granted by the planning board. When it comes in front of you guys to accept it as a townway, you'll know exactly what standard that was built to. But there's none, none of those standards are waived that will jeopardize the road in any way. Now, if you can just help me out, the, the percentage of land that you have to give to some sort of conservation or trust is what, 30%? 30% of the development, and yes. And what percentage of that has to be dry? I'm going to ask Laura because I don't want to misspeak. It's, um, 70, 70%. So 30% can be wetlands. 70% of the required so open space has, has to, to be, be dry. And, and it is? It's right on the square foot. Yeah, okay. Because it looks wetter. No, well, th that line this is yeah. the reason why you have a separate parcel down in here. This yeah. parcel is not part of the subdivision, okay? The subdivision border is the open space which is up here. That's why you've got a deed for this open space I see. and a deed for this open space. The parcel down here, which was the Tan House or the Tan Brook parcel, right. has That's nothing not to do with the subdivision. Right. We're just offering it to the town if the town will accept it. That's not a requirement. I, I don't think I, that was written as a requirement that the town take that piece. We're just offering that. It is a requirement that you take the other two parcels. Right. Oh, just, I understand that. Yeah. Just so people understand, the, the significance of the Tanbrook parcel is that it's part of our water uh, aquifer. So you want to preserve it and prevent any type of intrusion or leaking or anything that could go into it. So that's and a good thing. Trisha looked into the tax ramifications of the property, and I think it's something like Five hundred dollars a year for for all of them, or was it two hundred? It was it was two hundred dollars a year for all the property, so it's yeah. really not a burden, you know, a, a financial issue for the town to take this. Any other discussion? Okay. So, so Steve, are you asking us to take all three properties? Yeah. <coughs> it's Laura, did you two deeds? Did you find the verbiage in the bylaw? Yeah, it is required. It is. Okay. So how do so you what, can it? you do me one favor, Lord? What is that? What is that section? I'm not trying to put you on. I just need to know what it is. Thirteen point six. Five fifty. Okay. Thank you. And, and I'd only ask one further thing. We we have a slight bit of grading that's going to happen at the entrance, at the edge of this parcel here. So what we're trying to do is to get the town to accept the land. We don't want to deed, actually deed the land to the town until we get that portion done and regraded and reseeded in that area so that there's no liability to the town. We'd rather work on it while we own it. Very conscientious. So let me ask you this, though, Steve. The only property that you're obligated to sell to the town or to the, for conservation purposes are the orange areas. Two orange pieces. Okay. Yep. And we have two deeds or three deeds? There's two deeds. And one deed just has the two parcels that are in orange. And the other one, the is, other one is for the other okay. piece. So, so tonight, obviously town council would have to look at the deeds and, and do all that sort of stuff. Do we want to... You want to proceed and make a motion to accept it? You want to accept two, the two parcels we have to, or all three parcels? I guess those are our decisions. John brings up a good point that the, the blue area is part of the aquifer, and it's you know better to have it under hard control than than not. Um, anything yeah, else? I, my my proposal would be to say okay. Um, would be to say accept the properties as proposed except that the Tanbrook parcel would be uh, transferred to the care and custody of the Board of Selectmen uh, obviously for 
open space and for um, you know, conservation reasons. Um, and the other two, I guess if, if that's what uh, the section 550.6E says, then we can't do that. Otherwise, I'd say, yeah, convert, convert to the Board of Selectmen. But, um, so if we want to accept it, let's do a motion. So what we'll, ex we'll make two motions, one to accept an orange yeah. in, in the hands of CONCOM, yeah. and the blue will be. Right. With the provision of town council and us going over these deeds. All right, I'll do the, how about this? I'll vote to accept as a gift and transfer to the care and custody of the Conservation Commission parcel, uh, parcels of land in situate shown as open space parcel A on a plan and B on a plan of land entitled Tilden Estates, a de definitive flexible open space development plan at 77 Elm Street in situate Massachusetts dated January 12, 2011, period. Second. Why don't we say with the caveat of review of the deed? Uh, we, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll move to amend with the, um, I guess, the, with the um, caveat that uh, town council reviews um, the, the, the deed and the, uh, the transfer. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Then I'll take a um, I move to uh, vote to accept as a gift and transfer to the care and custody of the, con uh, of the Board of Selectmen um, land in situate, Massachusetts, shown as Tanbrook Protective Parcel on a plan of land entitled Plan of Land in the Town of Situate, Massachusetts, 77 Elm Street, uh, dated March 14th, 2011. With Sorry. the caveat, of With the caveat the town council um, reviews it and um, period. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Laura, do you have anything? Uh, no, I just wanted to uh, point out in this section, it, it doesn't specify the conservation commission, but it does say all open space shall be preserved by donation to the town for conservation purposes. So I'm assuming that that means Well, I, I, like I, uh, I would, uh, I'm going to modify my motion on <laughs> the first one. Can you just do me a favor and read that again? Okay. Um, all open space shall be preserved by donation to the town for conservation purposes. That, that clearly does not say to the conservation. All right. I'm going to move. I, I, I like the second one. The second one I, I, I'm fine with. Okay. Second. So. Do you have any? Do you have any feedback on the second one? No. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have a second. Um, all those in favor of the motion for the uh, Tambrook Protective Parcel? Aye. 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 So that's unanimous. I'd like to move to um, rescind or vacate my earlier motion, which was to. Um, move the gift and transfer it to the care and custody of the Conservation Commission. Second. Second to rescind. Point of oh. order, rescind the vote. The not vote. the motion, rescind the vote. Rescind, rescind the, vote. the vote. Okay. Because you voted on that. Second, Second by Second. Mr. Harris. Right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, I'll make a motion again. This time I'll vote to move to accept as a gift and transfer to the care and custody of the Board of Selectmen. Parcels of land in situate shown as open space parcels A and open space parcel B on a plan and land entitled Tilden Estates, a definitive flexible open space development plan at 77 Elm Street in situate Massachusetts and dated January 12, 2011. With the approval, of, With the approval of town council. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. And I'm sure town council will look at that to make sure that that will not invalidate our special permits for the Correct. development. Yes. Correct. If we find that it has to be CONCOM, then we'll, we'll change it to there. It, Sheila, if you need me to tell you what the motions are, I'll, I'll, I'll do that afterwards. Yes. Sure. All Great. Right. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. Brewer. Steve, thank you. Thanks for your time. Okay. Move on to item number five, which is the uh, building permit fee for solar panels. Ms. Harbottle? I know that you're all familiar with the, the Solarized Situate Program, which has been um, kind of promoted um, through Town Hall and on the website and, and so on. And the main purpose of that program is to try to get Situate residents a better deal on installing solar panels. 
and to make it more um, enticing for private property owners to put on solar, one of the things that we were recommended to take a look at was to reduce the building permit fee for solar panels. And um, from talking with Neil, Neil Duggan, the usual fee is about $300. Um, we discussed this. We came up with a uh, proposal to reduce it to $150. Um, I have to say, unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's going to be an overwhelming um, response to this program. You know, so far, there have really only been a handful of people whose properties qualify and who are actually going to do it. Um, I don't know, you know, at the end of the day, how many people will sign up for it. Um, but anyway, we were interested in proposing this reduction in the building permit fee to try to make it a little more um, attractive to people. Um, do surrounding communities charge about the same? That I really, I unfortunately couldn't tell you. Okay. And it's a drop from 300 to $150 for the green initiative. Does this have any impact on the solar array? No, I don't believe so. No, because that's not under this program. So it would have to be under? It, it would only be for people subscribing to this solarized situate program. Is that the way it reads? Um, although we, we could make it everyone, but yeah, I think the idea well, was it says just It's pretty vague to set a maximum fee of $150 for a building permit for installation of solar panels. I don't know what. Yeah, I think um, Tony, that's a good catch. It should be specifically for the residents. Um, I guess by way of background, Situate's one of four communities statewide that have been selected to participate in this program. So um, this is an additional incentive. We had a ton of initial interest. There's also an event. Help me out, Laura. It's the, uh, the barbecue. Solar Situate Barbecue Thursday. Thursday, Thursday right. that the board's invited to um, to encourage a number of people. What we're finding is that many, many people expressed an interest, but when they look at the various thresholds to qualify, that's when they're sort of falling off. But we still want to encourage as many people and incentivize them to, if they're able to do this, and it's something that works for them, to, to help them along that way. And this is just another s proactive step in that regard. And I think that's, this is one of those things where a couple people do it and find it successful, and that it has legs of its own, and it grows from there. I've actually heard a couple people talking about it, so. Um. Okay. Is, is this with, um, so this would be, um, um, is this program, is it under, what's the program? Is it a state program? What's, what, what's uh, it just? It's, it's through the state. It's the uh, Massachusetts Clean Energy Center, which is sponsoring it. So in other words, what I'm trying to fashion a motion. That's what I'm trying to do oh. here. So I'm saying, is it solarized situate? Is oh, that the program? Solarized situate. So it's like, okay. So how about a motion? Um, vote to uh, set a maximum fee of $150 for a building permit for installation of, a, of solar panel, panels for residents who apply under the Solarized Situate Program. Second. Is that what you like? Great. All right. Okay. Second. Second. Further discussion? Mr. Bjorkman. Yeah, Steve. Uh, I just have a quick question. Is there also an electrical permit that's required for this? Um, I imagine there is. The building permit will just handle putting up the arrays on the roofs. How much is the? That I, I don't know. Off the top. It's not a flat fee, Steve. Uh, the electrical wouldn't be a flat fee. The electrical may be a flat fee because most of these systems are probably going to be about the same size. Right. I think they're looking at trying to do five PW systems for everybody. But you know, again, I don't know if it's a hundred dollars for an electrical fee, but Laura could certainly come back in and talk to the electrical inspector and see if they might be able to bring that one down to fifty or something. Yeah. Very it's good a, it's point. an incentive. Yeah. So we're going to leave that in your court to okay. find out about that. Maybe you can find out at the barbecue. We'll give it a little publicity. Wednesday, Thursday, solar, Thursday, Thursday, excuse me. And where is it? It's at the Pier Situate, 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 Situate Harbor, Building. Harbor Community Pier, Building. The Situate Community Harbor Building, Harbor formerly known as Pier 44. Um, this Thursday. This Thursday, 5 to 7. 5 to 7. We need dinner. And everyone is invited. Great. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
Great. All those in favor? Aye. Um, aye. It's unanimous. Thank Great. you. And you, you'll get back to us on the electrical component. I will. Thank, Thank you, you, Steve. Okay. Item number six, uh, discussion of a facilities manager. Um, I included in the board's packet a draft job description for a position that um, I'd like the board to contemplate and consider for placement on the fall town meeting warrant. Um, I also provide some supplemental information to you earlier this week. I think um, we've had individual conversations over the last several months about the need to better coordinate uh, public buildings. And one of the things that, that's really happened is between the wind turbine, the solar array, the solarized situate, the green communities, the ESCO project, the Gates RFP, the Pier 44 study committee, it's all a very um, concerted effort to get a feel for what our future public building needs are, especially on the non-school side, and to get our arms around what the capital needs are, what the investment should be, and really what the appropriate functional use of it. Um, as I've mentioned in my email, all of that work um, that I just described has been done under the auspices of either the Renewable Energy Committee, the Public Building Commission, the P44 Study Committee, but the administrative part and the coordination has been done by Laura Harbottle and Al Bender. And none of those responsibilities really would typically reside in a job description that you would find in another community for those duties. Um, we've essentially created this position by virtue of our initiative with the board and the town's goal of being energy efficient. So, um, so I think it's really appropriate to have this type of position in place. <coughs> In addition to that, the ongoing maintenance, the coordination of inventory and supplies like cleaning supplies, toilet paper, paper towels, uh, regular once a year building things like cleaning of windows, cleaning of carpets, um, loss control, ensuring that when the insurance inspector comes for our general liability and there's building safety issues noted and things like that, those are taken care of. All of that doesn't have uh, one set of eyes looking at it, that is very decentralized. So what this proposes to do is to create um, a facilities management department similar to what we undertook with y IT by placing uh, department head level status individual in that position and to eventually grow that department um, so it can encompass all town and school buildings. Um, but right now there are a number of barriers to having anybody sort of walk in and take over oversight of all of those. Uh, collective bargaining uh, and other issues are involved, but um, it's something that I believe is really important and given that the wind turbine and the ESCO project are all in play now, um, I'm bringing to you for a fall town meeting as opposed to uh, the annual town meeting. Um, I did circulate the job description to the chairs of the Public Building Commission and uh, the chair of the Renewable Energy Committee. I got feedback from both of them. I provided this draft job description to Dr. Martin two months ago and solicited her input um, to let her know um, that this is in the, the discussion stage. So um, I'm bringing it to you tonight for initial discussion, not to, to get your read so we can, as we get further into the issues and planning for special town meeting, um, know where we're headed. Great. Before we start, Paul, can you open that door? And, and can you open that door? It's dying. It's been a little hot in here. Thanks. Um, so, great. And I, um, you, as always, when, when Trisha gives us, I mean, the, the detail in this job description, you know, is very, very um, detailed, I guess. And, uh, you know, it's very encompassing and it it's really gives a good sense of what the project is. So we see that you've thought it out very well. You gave us some statistics a while ago, the number of buildings that we have and the property value of all those buildings in this town. And it was really, you know, shocking how much it is, how many buildings we actually have to take 55, care of. 55 structures that are insured by the town. So 55 structures worth tens of millions of, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars probably. And right now, there's really no specific control of that. It's kind of cut up between different people and it's part of their job. And um, I see this as another position that takes the town to another level. Like the IT 
you know, where we're actually advancing the services that we provide the town. And I think it's a, it's a great idea. Obviously, the, the question will come is how are we going to pay for it? And, um, um, you know, that's kind of your job. You've told us that, you know, we have money now to, pay, to do it in the fall, but obviously it will be a recurring expense, and you've got to make your budget work, so there'll be, it'll work somehow, or there'll be cuts in, in some other area to make, to make this funded, so. Yeah, and the other thing, and I think it was in the supplemental information, this is a position that is constantly being created and filled right now in municipalities. Marshfield just did it, Hanover just did it, um, and that's only in our immediate area, and I think I saw three or four in the MMA Beacon in the last two months. So it's something, some are just being created around the Green Communities Initiative right. just to oversee that slash ESCO. We have that plus our grant from Solarize Mass, plus the turbine, plus um, the solar array. And even though a lot of the solar array and the wind turbine, Paul Reedy tells me, is going to be outsourced for maintenance, there still needs to be someone who's looking at the terms of those lease, the lease payments, the infrastructure and capitalization and things like that. So in and of itself, just those alone for the new initiatives we started in the last two years, it's probably a full-time job in and of itself. And that's what I meant to bring up, uh, you're Sean, you're probably said this too, is the savings that we're going to get from the green initiatives are going to more than fund, yeah. fund this And position. I think that's going to be a huge primary purpose of this job is to ensure that ESCO, once it goes in, has a set of eyes looking at it to make sure we're getting those identified savings. Sean? T took the words right out of my mouth, but even I was going to say one other thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it's required to... Um, Yes, to, yes, thanks, yeah, to get the funding in some of those programs you just mentioned. That almost seems like it would be part of the criteria. But, but like Tony said, it's, you know, this person could very well pay for himself, and him or her, in six months. Well, I think, you know, the thing that, you know, we've sort of talked about but it hasn't been really made clear is there's been a tremendous amount of administrative and management work done by Laura and Al for where we've gotten so far, whereas other communities have a building maintenance department or another individual or assistant town manager to really shepherd those kinds of things in. And that's all been done by Laura and Al with the help of the, our, you know, a renewable energy committee and, and, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, well, we, pay for consultants. we don't want to blow this investment in, in what we're doing forward. So we need someone outfitted by education and experience to make sure our investments are, are being handled well. Any? Yeah, I, I, I totally, fully support it. I mean, you know, I'm sure there are people going to say, oh, yeah, you're creating another position and take, you know, somebody's going to have to pay for it and, you know, with the override. The reality is we have 55 buildings, structures, and you're having two department heads from DPW and planning administering a lot of this stuff. I mean, it's, it's you know, and then that takes time away from what they're supposed to be doing when you're dealing with the roads and other um, public work issues, and then you got the planner doing it's 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 about time that the town gets into the 21st century and deals with these oh, issues. Point. The same with the IT director. I cut out of the budget because I set the priorities for what I think the town needs based on your approvals. But and that's the way this will work. If this is a priority that I think needs to be done, then it will be at the expense of other things. But well, it's just a discussion tonight, so we don't need a motion. Um, I'll give Rick you one if you want. No. Rick will be back um, <laughs> next week. Joe's and Joe in favor. I, I just had a brief back as, yeah. at shortly as well. So um, we'll get their feedback shortly, and then um, we'll have plenty of time to get on the on the uh, yeah, for further discussion. Fall. Yep. Great. Um, move on to item number seven, which is uh, street layouts for acceptance of public ways. Kevin. Good evening. Before you tonight for street acceptance, the street acceptance committee voted to recommend to the board that the, these three streets move forward for consideration for acceptance as public ways by town meeting at the fall town meeting tentatively planned for late October for Simmon Drive, Hickory Lane, and Beach Tree Farm. As uh, chairman of the board of selectmen, you also get to be chairman of the streetways. Uh, acceptance so I've been at these meetings they've gone through all the steps this is just the next step in the process most of these communities have agreed to a betterment um, to to pay to bring their street up to code and now it's just the next step in terms of getting it um, before the town to see if the town accepts it um, there's no expense to the town for these um, improvements 
And like I said, some of these have been going on for months. I see some of the people in the audience that have been working on these. So, um, um, and it's great because then there's no liability and, and the town uh, expands its, its highway and street mileage and uh, we take care of the streets and they're up to the codes that the town wants. So, um, Motion. not too much complexity to it. Motion. Move that the Board of Selectmen direct the DPW to prepare the necessary layout of the following streets as public ways. For Simmon Drive, Hickory Lane, Beechtree Farm Road. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. I think the process after this is it goes to Planning Board. They look at it and they give us their feedback in terms of whether they have any issues with it. We discuss that and then at which point we'll vote to put it on the fall meeting and then the town will vote as to whether or not they want to accept the streets. So, yes. No, no. no thought about this just before he leaves and we'll do we'll do road layout also simultaneously while it's with the planning department great um so we've got a motion and a second all those in favor aye aye it's unanimous thank you kevin i think sean Ke is walnut tree hill can you just give us an update or if you i, don't I can i was at the last meeting um what? they've gone through and done the engineering for the area there and they've got a um a number to complete the whole project and now um it's the that money is, or that that project is being going back and forth to the bondholders, Good. and I'm sure there'll be some back and forth so it's, between. it's moving along, Tony. It's definitely moving Great. along. Great. The town is really taking the initiative to to try and fight the battle for that community, and um, I know Jim Toomey's group and Al have, have done a lot of work to get it, and we've hired consultants to do the. the yeah, we hired at our expense an engineer to get it right. process. And and right, right, right. Okay, and it's about, I think it was. Eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of work that needs to be done to get the whole project up to speed. So now it's it'll be a tug of war with the insurance company to get them to agree to pay the money, right? And then the work will be done. Thanks. Okay, move on to item Thank number eight: Kevin. revised track traffic rules and regulation schedule. I saw Dottie. Mark, how are you? Hi, Dottie. Hi, how, are how you doing? Good, thanks. <coughs> Finally. Yeah. <laughs> this has been an ongoing project for quite a while, I guess. Yeah. And um, we're happy to finally present you with the copies. Those are draft copies insofar as the changes are marked for you. Um, a clean copy with after when you decide whether it, uh, to accept or not will be made. Um, did you all get a um, memo today? Yes. Uh, Follow-up memo. As most of the things in the rules and regulations, uh, this is just all the executive orders and changes that have been made over the years and just updating the documents. Um, <clears throat> The, uh, this one here, uh, it was pointed out to me today, was inadvertently omitted, although it was an executive action approved in June of 2006. <coughs> and it was adding to the water uh, front zones um, in the harbor section, Front Street, Cole Parkway, and the town pier. Um, we will be adding those to the uh, document. The other uh, update was Moreland Road. Um, in this it says delete from s schedule one section two what does it take is it taking out of well, you know, a different area we looked at that and that that wording came directly from the executive action in 2006 the regs have been sort of reorganized so although the uh, those streets have been put under the waterfront zone there are no letter designations in that section any longer it's just a list of all the streets and that are included in the waterfront zone okay there's well, been a lot of renumbering of, of, you know, and just really organizing it, so we hope it will be easier for um, anyone that needs to look at it. The other uh, change was in the copy you were given, um, the uh, section two, the parking prohibitions tow zone. Mullen Road, we needed a distance. Um, Mark Thompson went out today, and the new wording will be the center of the right of way to the spit, 35 feet, feet northeast to the no parking tow zone sign, 
and the sec center of the right of way to the spit southwest 110 feet to the existing no parking tow zone sign. So all it was was just making the language a little clearer. Um, but the signs, they're there. Well, this was a lot of work. I mean, it, there wasn't, there weren't a lot of changes per se, but you know, when you go through a document that has all this and adding a word or correcting a word here and there, it takes a lot of time to do it. So we appreciate the work that was done. Um, I did like the language on the snowmobiles that they're <laughs> not allowed on public roads. Um, but other than that, I didn't see anything that jumped out to me as, as any sort of crazy change to things. Um, I mean, the town has changed a lot since the last time this was updated with, yeah. with the railway, with, with the new streets, with all of that. Well, hopefully we've, we've added all of that into yeah. this. I, I found what it did is it, it took more details and, and really specified what a certain thing was as opposed to some vaguer language. So, um, yeah, good job. Uh, John or Sean, any? Yeah. Just a, just a general comment. Um, during the winter, I've seen cars parked out on the road, and, I, and, and, and they may not be listed here. And it's, and Kevin, and then you're faced with the task of trying to clean the roads, whether you're, you know, de-icing or plowing. Is in here somewhere, I mean, at what point do they get towed? You know, they're, you know, I've, I've heard of school buses having to make special, you know, maneuvers to get around them, let alone a fire engine. It's just not acceptable. It's just, you know, and I, Anyone have any, either Brian or Kevin? Right. Any, uh, have two quite great job great job it's it's never easy to go through um, bylaws and regulations and try to make changes first to make sense of them tough and then to try to make improve them and then everything else so I commend the committee for doing it um, just in, it, maybe outside of the scope of this if somebody you know um, changing or putting stop signs is that a part of the traffic rules and regulations <coughs> is that you know so the reason why I, somebody had approached me and said geez they would like to see on some of the minor streets in between Hadley and, and Turner and Oceanside is an ability to put stop signs so you know on those smaller streets people stop so they'd have to go before traffic rules and regs. Usually we receive a request either through oftentimes from citizens directly from the selectman's office from the police department okay. um, asking us to look at some of those areas and um, oftentimes we do a site visit um, we rely heavily on the police department um, we, usually, we also have a member from up the fire department on the committee. So usually that's how we would look at that and then make a decision based on what the state recommendations are, is that the way to put it, um, for doing that. And the other question I had was speed limits. Is, um, I know one time we're, I think we're talking about, I want to say Oceanside or Turner or something, the state mandates. Do we have an idea of like what state, what streets we control versus are mandated by the state? Um, for speed the state would control all of them. All of them. So the town does not have. Wow. We talked about that at the Hummer Rock meeting right. the other day. Gotcha. All right. Just sometimes that's a it question I can answer <coughs> to people when they ask. Yeah, the police brought up that sometimes it doesn't move in your favor. They do some sort of average speed on a road, and the uh, chief. The formula is with 80% of the traffic is doing. Sometimes it's just the one road accident. It's surveyed. It's, uh, So it's based on an average of a 
Wait, I need to Traffic for the. And it has to be minimum number. It gives me an idea, and the reason why I said it was because I talked to Kevin and Al about at one point we're talking about. If we redo the roads, then, you know, um, obviously nice roads. Sometimes people tend to go faster. But if you put, like, plateaus, not speed bumps, but plateaus that go up and go down, that's going to reduce speed pretty, pretty much. Then it would average in. The fact, that factor of uh, badgering the speed could lower the speed limit. You see what I'm saying? In other words, if you're driving up and driving down, driving up, you're not going to be going 30 miles an hour. <laughs> you're going to be going, like, 20 or something, which would reduce speed. And the speed limit, therefore, would be reduced. With the existing situation is that uh, everyone in that road that was zoned in 1973 by the state, the speed limit in my house would be something else. Totally out of, out of uh, touch with what's going on there now as far as the number of people that yep. walk and bike and, and the street subdivisions going in that way going forward on the street. The way the statute Thank you. One more thing going yes, forward, if I may. One of the things the committee would, would like to suggest is that going forward, there be a process set up so that all executive orders, the changes are made in the document so that there won't be this gathering of information over uh, num numerous years to update the document. So in order to keep it updated, um, someone um, being the keeper of uh, the uh, document mm -hmm. and so that when executive <coughs> actions are made, not only are they in someone's folder, but they're actually made uh, to the document itself. Right. And the other thing would be that we would like to thank the former members of the committee, uh, especially Paul Scott, Chief Stewart, and Arthur Wood, who uh, gave a lot of time to this. Paul especially, he has more that he remembers then uh, it's amazing. Now, who is the keeper of this document? Well, it's my understanding, and I'm not sure of this, that the clerk, uh, town clerk, uh, must have a copy of it. But I did speak to uh, Al Bangart today, and um, whether the changes be made through his office, but it depends, I guess, what you're going to do with this document. Um, I don't know the legalities of whether you have to sometime put this on your website or um, and someone be in charge of changing that. We have, what we want to do is make sure that all those changes going forward are put into the document. Trisha, you want to think about that and see who should be the keeper of that document? Yes, there's a hard copy of it now. I mean, the. It, who has it in a uh, Jean has the uh, the secretary Jean, has Jean Martin who has, has been it on wonderful. her computer yes she does okay great all right yeah. and Jean's right back there Jean's right here oh yep. Jean Thank I'm sorry you, Jean. I didn't see yeah you. she's been great keeping us okay. on task here <laughs> great so can we have a motion vote to adopt the re uh, revisions recommended by the traffic rules and regulations committee as presented second second by Mr. Harris for the discussion aye all in, all in favor aye aye, aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. One quick question before you go. Yeah. In terms of getting a sign, as John talked about, on a state road on 3A, does the town have anything to do with that? No. So that's all through I a state Mass process. Highway. Mass Highway. Mass Highway. Yeah. Okay. And even some of the roads going into it, right? Can we run into that with some of the, um, the side streets? Roads. What? The abutting roads. The abutting roads. They are in charge of that also. Really? Mm. Oh. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all very much. All thank right, you. thank you. See you, thank you. Number 10 is uh, a discussion vote of setting a special town meeting date. I'll move to set the town, uh, the, set the date for a special town meeting for Monday, October 24th, 2011. Second. Any further discussion? We could do it Monday, Tuesday, any Monday seems. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be here. Should be told, but. I'm not changing the date for me, so well, Monday it'd be, seems It would be fine. good to have everyone. I agree.
Do you have your calendar? I do. Hang on. Are you in Japan, are you? No, I am not. I'm not going to be in Japan. Um, That's wish. a little joke. Rick, you'll watch this replay. <laughs> we were thinking of you. Little he's, dig. He's in uh, Japan looking at tsunami stuff. Yeah. Hey, yeah, the 24th I am out. Um, but um, the 25th. 25th is fine with me. Trish, what do you think? That's fine. I am not going to be in hanging. Hang on, I can tell you that. <laughs> so. Sean, how's the the 25th? I'm always here. <laughs> so Tuesday. we didn't. Uh, we had a second. We want to. Do we want to start it's over just, again? I'm just. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? You had second. I'll just um, amend my motion to make it the Tuesday, October 25th. And I'll second that one. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Item number 13 is, actually, you know what? We skipped over one. Do I have to, do I have to say that we skipped over it? Yeah, just say no. that it was yep. withdrawn. Uh, number nine, which was assigned a boatyard lease, has been um, withdrawn. We went over to number 10. Um, number 11 is other business. Does anybody have any? I was just, can I just jump in um, yeah. recreation and I'm just going to uh, give you just a one, two statement um, synopsis of what's going on with the sailing program. There were some um, sailing instructors that former probably students of the sailing program have come in at the last meeting and have asked if they could add another layer to the sailing program and it had to do with being competitive with other towns like a, a racing program um, and I'm just going to leave it at that because it was just it was the first time it was mentioned at the rec meeting there were um, you know some like I said instructors there that presented this for the first time they have to possibly update some boats but maybe not they're looking to do something for next summer just uh, uh, I was very impressed with what I saw at the meeting, and you know, they, they will come in here and you know formally tell everyone what they're what they like to do when they get a little further along. But just the whole idea of the sailing program—if you're involved, if your children are involved, or if you're involved in the signups—I mean, it's just it's taken off to the point where they had a separate Saturday just for sailing, and it's, it's kind of fun to see. So it's just kind of a positive thing that's going on in that. That's. That's all I had to him. Yeah, and you're at the sign-ups. You know people I've been get there, there at 3.30 in the morning to get in line to... And it's fun, other than when they can't get the week they want. Then it's not so fun telling the parents that, you know. But they seem to all go away, have, you know, check their schedules and, and get their children involved. So it, it's, you know, a, a great thing for the town. Uh, Quick question I have. Is our next meeting, I'm looking at you, Sheila, but um, usually I, I look at Kim. Is our next meeting um, the Tuesday after Labor Day weekend, or is it actually sixth. going? Okay, it is. All right, yeah, fine. That, I was going to bring that up right. under other business, so if you want to talk about it. Sure. Maybe. Well, we can, we can talk about the schedule. Right now we have the 6th as set up. Um, the good thing is we will have Rick here and possibly um, Joe here as well, And uh, but unfortunately we won't have Trisha here. Okay. She's on vacation that week. The meeting after that, we haven't set the date yet. It's tentatively on the 20th, um, but Tricia won't be here that week, and I don't know if Rick's around that week, so we really have to look at everyone's schedule for the meeting after that one before we decide. But the next one will be on the 6th. Yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back the Wednesday, the 21st. Okay. I'll be out of town for three days. So maybe we can move it from Tuesday to Wednesday yeah, if we check everybody's that schedule. Be the best. No, I have no. I, I only ask that because of events that are coming up uh, right. the weekend after Labor Day weekend, which I was going to mention now, but I'll wait until the sixth and share it then. But um. so, the, so if you can look at your schedules and see if Wednesday the twenty-first works as opposed to Tuesday the twentieth. Um, just the only other thing I was going to say, I, I had a few discussions with a few people about sidewalks and and bike paths, and um, one of the thoughts I had, maybe we sh as a board should think about in the next, you know, in the coming months to reconstitute the sidewalk committee that we had done back uh, four years ago, or oh, wait a minute, now it's five years ago, just to update, there's some other developments that have been put in, I know along Tilden and 
maybe to kind of think about sidewalks to find out some other spots that may actually be more problematic. The problem is obviously, uh, can you build sidewalks? Where's the money coming from? But I think it's always important to kind of update it. Um, the other thing is maybe in conjunction with bike paths, um, obviously there's bike paths that were put down on the driftway and now in Gannett and completing it, there's been suggestion of a bike path going uh, down Hadley and then other bike paths going off to uh, Neilgate Road. But maybe that committee could deal with both sidewalks and bike paths and kind of advise the board in a capacity to help out. So that was one of the thoughts I had. Um, on a brighter note and funner note, not that the sidewalks are not brighter, not exciting, but um, Labor Day weekend's coming up a week from Monday. Um, and so um, Sand Hills, the Citra Beach Association usually has a parade. It's the oldest parade in town since 1926, and that's on Sunday, September 4th. Um, kicking off around 12 o'clock, I think it is. So a lot of people, if you haven't gone, go. Um, Hummerock actually has a, a parade of horribles on Saturday. So it's nice to kind of finish the uh, summer off. It's been a great summer, and if you'd like to see um, very hometown uh, folky, well put together little parades that people get out, kids, um, please in, in, in indulge yourself and go down to either one. They're great, great times. And it goes, you can go right down Jericho Road and that's it right. loops Jericho Road and goes around. The lighthouse to the point, comes back, and uh, it's a short parade, and, and I know with the Hummer Rock the same, but it's, it's a great uh, thing that the community puts together. So. It is. It's a lot of fun. Um, a couple of things. One thing, um, just a quick note. We get a, a report every week from different department heads, and we got one from the IT department this week. And it's, when you read all the stuff that these people are doing, it's, it's pretty amazing. And it's great to get these concise management reports so we can look at it quickly and see what's going on and, and see where, our, where the money, particularly in the IT, where it's a new position, what this person is actually doing. So I commend you on that and commend Bill for the work that he's doing. Um, uh, another note, um, another committee that's put together and put a lot of time in together, the Pier 44 option is, has got a, uh, has, that's, all of you people are probably thinking about this, that's coming to um, some sort of discussion period again, so I imagine within the next month or so we'll be talking about that in more detail. Um, and the it, uh, 44 Jericho Road looks nice. It's been painted and the building's looking very nice. So. Um, Her did, did we have a meeting since Heritage Days? I don't think so. No. 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 I, I, think, I think the event went very well. Unfortunately, Mother Nature um, I see Ann back there, threw a little twist to us on Sunday, but we got a little sunshine at the end when uh, Steven Tyler came and sang for a little while at uh, Heritage Days, if you happen to be down there. Um, overall, I thought it was well run, well set up, a nice opening ceremony um, where Matt Brown told his stories and, and Jim Cantwell was there and Ed Cavell, and um, it, got, it got off to a good start. I don't know how, um, there were a lot of booths there. I think when I went there on Sunday, people started clearing out because of the weather, but um, the bands were very good, and overall, I thought it was a successful event. I don't know, Ann, did you have any? It was excellent. It really was. It was well attended. Saturday was fabulous. Sunday, not so much. But then, Steve, as you pointed out, Stephen Tyler showed up and sang some songs, including, I think, the closing one. But also, too, I think we need to recognize the fact that Jerry McMorrow put this together, mm. put the music. And, you know, the festival is really, aside from the crafters and the boat parade and, and what have you, it's really the music. That's what people come for. And, and he, mm. as much as he's Jerry, um, it was quite a program. No, he does. I, I think he draws a lot of the people outside of our community to come to come to the community. It's a big community event with itself, with just the chamber doing their stuff. But Jerry certainly does a lot of good work. And the bands that he gets are really, you know, popular bands. So it, it's good music and good entertainment. And you see a lot of people come to our town um, just to hear that. So. You know, thank you to the chamber and everybody that put it together. I and would also like to say thank you to the Department of Public Works, Mike Green in particular. Thank you to the police department. Um, Ryan Stewart was there with his son selling photographs. So it's become, that's become a family affair. The fire department was exemplary. There, there were no troubles at all, really. Great. It was a job well done by everyone. And thank you to all of you as well. And thank you to Jerry, as I was about to say, and, and all the other town departments that did it. It was, it was really a, a good time. Um, the other thing I wanted to add was, a, uh, well, a couple of things. We've got a, DP, a situate DPW day uh, where kids can come down and see 
um, dump trucks and street sweepers and backhoes and, and climb on the equipment and get a sense for what they do. This is the first annual one. It's on August 26th, which is this Friday from 9 to 12. So if you're hanging around and your kids are going crazy, let them come climb on a dump truck. Um, and that will be at the um, transfer station. No. No, nope, that will be at Town front Hall. Here, right It'll be front. right up front at Town Hall. Great. And also coming up shortly, I don't know what the date is yet, is we're going to have another uh, day where um, you can return your electronics and TVs and computers and all that stuff at a discounted rate or, um, or for free um, so people can, in the fall, clean out their, uh, their old stuff. Can I just say something sure. on that? You know, I have to tell you, that's really nice. I, I saw the sign <coughs> out there, and I said, you know, you see these touch-a-truck things in dif different communities, and it's a great opportunity for the town to showcase what it has, the equipment, the trucks. Kids love it. And uh, so I commend whoever came up with the idea. Good idea, and I, I hope, I know I'm going to try to get my kids down. I think it's just, you know, with all the equipment we have, the new equipment, <laughs> why not showcase it? Let the kids take a look at it. And it's a great job that Al does in terms of giving people the opportunity to get rid of electronics, pick up toys, all those extra events that they do are wonderful. Um, I guess we can wrap up the baseball season here. We should be proud of our Situate teams. We won four district champions in these age groups. Um, I'm not going to try and rattle them off except the nine A's that my son plays on. Good job, Matthew, and everybody else. Um, and it was a very successful year for, for Situate against big, big towns. So the baseball program is doing well. And if you go out to the field behind us, <clears throat> you'll see we're transitioning to football. So uh, good entertainment on the weekends in the fall as well. Um, that's all I have for new business. Any other? Trisha, do you have anything that we're? Great. Um, move on to item number 12, which is correspondence. I don't see any in here. No. So we can skip over that and go to item number 13, which is acceptance of the minutes. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the meeting minutes of regular session and executive session dated August 23rd, 2000 and, I'm sorry, uh, 2011. August 23rd, 2011. Second. Second by Ms. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. And now the last item, um, we're going to move into executive session for sale, interest in real estate, or labor negotiations. And we have a roll call. Aye. 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 Thank you all for coming, and uh, we'll see you on the 6th. Good night, folks. Good night. Thank you, John.